To thee we come, O Lord our God. participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and confess our sins. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, let us all recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And you will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And our God unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Love the Lord, all you faithful. The Lord protects the loyal. I will ever praise your name and be constant in my prayers to you. Thereupon, Lord, hear my voice and listen to my name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, for all that I have in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory. To whom God is the highest, and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, the heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, in your holy word, you have taught us about the necessity to pray always without becoming weary. You hear us when we call upon you. Help us to persist in our prayers and grant us patience to await your reply. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vincent, if you would proclaim the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But whenever he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. This is the word of the Lord. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. So that it may be possible with all perseverance and supplication for all the Holy Ones. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. <clears throat> Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be confident, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Yes. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Will he, then, delight in the Almighty, and call upon him constantly? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him in day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And so having known the Lord, and knowing the Lord, what more do we need? It is called Holy Scripture. You know, when I entered the seminary right after high school, I completed four years of study in three years. I found out that I was, or did not find out, but I was ordained at the age of 20. I could not even sign my name to certain official documents. And I thought for a moment, I says, wow, I was able to study all different kinds of courses and now I'm ready to go out into the world. How foolish, because it is not the end, but rather it is the beginning. It is the beginning of our journey in walking with the Lord 
and having the Lord work through us. How appropriate are the words we find of St. Paul writing to a young priest, Timothy. You know, every once in a while, I have a halfway decent sermon, but I do not even come close to the wisdom that is found in Holy Scripture. And the Word of God for us in the Polish National Catholic Church is a sacrament. I do not know of any other denomination that has placed the Word of God as a sacrament. In the early church there was an argument about whether or not reading the Word of God would bring sanctification unto the individual. I truly believe it does. You know, we, we hear St. Paul talking about that we argue about the different powers and the principalities. My brothers and sisters, we spend most of our lives living outside of ourselves. And we spend so little time reflecting upon the wisdom that is found in Holy Scripture. We are quick to compare ourselves with other people, somehow feeling that we are justified. But in Holy Scripture, it tells us there is only one judge, and that is God, the Father, who sent His Son Jesus into the world, of which we will proclaim in the Nicene Creed that he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Rely on scripture. No scripture. Don't have a Bible sitting on your coffee table to impress other people. It's most important that you impress God. Was that not the ministry of Jesus? Whether he healed or whether he taught, he did everything to glorify God in his life. Wake up. Realize that righteousness comes from God and that we will all be judged by our thoughts, our words, and our actions. And Paul writing to Timothy, the wisdom of Paul. Now Paul studied the Pharisaic law. He was aware of what was written in Holy Scripture, especially the Torah. And after that encounter of Paul on that road to Damascus, in which he encountered Jesus, he was given so much more. Not only did he understand the Torah, but now he understood the law in the vision, in the eyes of Jesus Christ. He proclaimed, it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And he beckons to his followers and he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you which was in Jesus Christ. To contradict the Word of God is to contradict our very heritage. And this, on this Sunday, we have prescribed the readings for Heritage Sunday. I'd like to share with you just a few words about heritage. Today we celebrate Heritage Sunday, which not only speaks about our Christian family, our immediate family, 
those who should be grounded in the Word of God through faith. But we go on to say, but most importantly, we speak of the origins of our, our family through whom we come through. When we speak of heritage, we talk of that which is inherited. We receive the blessings of those who have come before us in our immediate family. But we also speak of our heritage as a family of God. In the first letter of Peter the Apostle, we read of our heritage with God. Peter says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <coughs> Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, our first heritage is based on Holy Scripture. It is a spiritual heritage. God chose us out of love to bring all of us into a relationship with Him. In this, He gives us meaning and purpose of life. Jesus further clarifies this in his words found in the Gospel of John. Jesus said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And finally, we read from the writings of, John, of St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, in which he says, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. It is the very spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if heirs, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, we celebrate on this Heritage Sunday that which we inherited from our families, the, our loved ones who have gone before us, a biblical heritage built upon the Word of God. And a heritage that the ancestors who formed the Polish National Catholic Church gave to us. This week, delegates of the Polish National Catholic Church, both clergy and lay, will gather in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where the church was first organized by the late Prime Bishop Francis Chicago. He gave to those who were to follow the Word of God as a sacrament by which we can grow and develop into a kind of people that God would want us to be. And so I ask in your prayers today that you pray for the success of this upcoming synod. I know Dr. Shirley Mitlitsky and I will be representing this parish. We ask for your prayers that the Spirit of God may direct all who gather in that first city of the Polish National Catholic Church and that God, through His Spirit, 
would inflame all of us to a greater love for him and for his church. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints 
May they whose memories we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, may we who offer these gifts to you never cease to call upon you for your grace and love and remain steadfast in your service as we live and spread your holy word. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, May we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, on this Heritage Sunday, may we join with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspotted sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace and defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, in our prayers unto God, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus are hospitalized, and pray for not only them, but for the wellness of their families. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. In our deepest prayers, let us remember those who are less fortunate than we are, those who have suffered calamity in the states of Florida, in Georgia, in the South Carolinas, with the flooding. In our deepest prayers today, let us remember all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we pray to God, our Heavenly Father, for those who serve in our armed forces and pray for their health and safety that they may be returned safely back unto their families. 
Let us pray this day for the upcoming 26th General Synod of the Polish National Catholic Church and pray that God would instill within that body his divine spirit to renew and to cause us to grow closer to him. And for these and all other intentions, and also for all who are present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you received the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants 
who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look out upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and vow say to grant it peace and unity according to your holy will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be a cause for my judgment or condemnation. <laughs> Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, it may become my safeguard and healing remedy. 
our Savior, Ma our saving Master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer together the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this temporal gift become to us an everlasting healing.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effected for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to the Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.